back here at our Mart Art Institute here in Cardor in sunny Sunnyvale, California. I have a special guest with me today casting the first quarterfinals of the day is Matt Zhu. You might know him from MXP Tacoma, the one that if you ever watch the streams, also a local player in our area playing mainly for you know, Omnath piles for most of the time in his life. Yeah, Omnath piles, that's right. So we actually have our top eight now. We're going to break it down a little bit here. So we. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. So, <laughs> thank you, Tom, for sending us. Now, so we have our top eight here in the first quarterfinals. We have Alwyn Webiz. I can't really say the last name versus Andy Hyun on Demir Merktide. Then we're gonna have Kevin Soloway on Demir Merktide versus Curtis Lamb on Anley Titan. Then we're gonna have Maxfield Walters on Bars Energy versus Francisco Craner on Hammer Time. Then Will on Bars Energy versus Charles Nguyen on Domain Zoo. Of all the top de decks in the top eight, what are you most excited to see, Matt? I got a root for my boy Francesco here. Uh, Hammer is a throwback, way back from MH2. You know, hasn't seen a lot of light under the, hasn't seen a lot of daylight recently. But Francesco did top eight MXP San Francisco with Hammer time uh, back in May. So if anyone can make it work, he can. Yeah, Francesco, our Hammer time special in the area here. If you get one with Hammer, then Hammer might be in decent spots. But let's go straight to the sideboard here. Actually, we're already in game here for the, the players here. So we have Andy already going down to 18. Oh, sorry, yeah, already at 19 here. Well, Alwyn is on 18 right now. Sorry about the little bit of delay, but man. So we're actually going to have a nice start here with Ocelot Pride out with a Johnny, which is probably the most ideal start. One of the more ideal starts you want to have if you're on Alwyn's side. Ooh, Andy not having uh, a two drop there is pretty bad. Having a period, I guess he periodined on turn two. Yes, periodined turn two. Yeah, it was a periodined turn one, the periodined turn two. Not having a Bowmasters or either a Psycho Frog here is pretty detrimental on his end. While well, Alwyn is going to go combat now on his turn number three and is going to start swinging out for everything. It's going to be two, three, four, five damage here. Going to go down to 14. Let's just. Pr so, you're still not in the worst spot here if you're if you're on Andy's side. I'll fetch. So I'm gonna fetch down the eight, nineteen here. Let's see. So from uh, Alwyn is gonna have seven points. Blood Moon. Wow. So Blood Moon gets jammed down, and Andy's gonna scoop it right up. Wow, so that was a very, very fast game number one here, where Blood Moon just completely locked out Andy. Yeah, I mean, it's normally you would think a Murktide player, you know, they play their own sort of moon effect in uh, Harbinger of the Seas. Harbinger of the Seas. But Andy, no fetch lands. To be honest with you, yeah. So on the draw. The only thing is that my girlfriend wants to do another plant today. Yeah, Andy, no fetch lands. Had a really rough time there where, wow, Alwyn picking out that cyborg guy. That's a double sided cyborg guy with a lot of matchups that seem pretty detailed here. Yeah, I, I believe Alwyn is using, for anyone who uh, cares, uh, there's a uh, Boros Energy player by the name of Bamzing. You might know him from the modern deck dumps on Reddit and such. Bamzing is a big Boros aficionado and I believe Alwyn is using Bamzing cyborg guy. Actually, yeah, I remember like if you local area, seeing him write down his cyborg guy because he, just couldn't, he didn't know that he had to, you know, not have it printed out, instead had it on his phone. So that was very awkward the first three times Alwyn had to show his opponent his cyborg guy. It's something, it's one of those weird things where uh, when you get into competitive play, it's very hard to, there are a, little, a lot of nuances about, you know, what you can and can't do. 
and, bit, and having your cyborg guide on your phone, obviously your opponent has to be able to see what you're looking up on your phone so uh, at, to prevent cheating. So if you have your cyborg guide there, yeah, you risk showing it to them. Yeah. So we're talking about a little bit this about the cyborging here. We know we've seen Andy on camera a couple of times here. He is playing, I think, two, three to four copies of Phyrexian Crusader in the cyborg, along with extra pay to bring it into this Boros Energy matchup. So if you're Boros Energy side, I do know that sometimes sometimes it is being bring, brought in just for the Psycho Frog. But what other cards does the Energy deck have to the disposal for this? Uh, in all honesty, Energy doesn't need to do too much sideboarding for this. Um, your main deck is already pretty well configured. Obviously, if you're playing cards like Ragavan, Ragavan is bad into Bowmaster uh, from the Murktide side. So those are potentially like three or four slots you could cut. Otherwise, there's not much because your one drops, your ocelots, your guide souls, and raptors, they're the they're the core of your deck, uh -huh. they're your engine, and you need those to uh, have it run. I mean, yeah, I mean, Boros my, Energy, as I far as far as I know, nice, really uh, enjoys the Demir Murktai matchup Cyber as they kind of become more of the control deck in the matchup, where they're yeah. actually keeping the Murktai deck in check while slowly beating them down. But also, well, you can have the explosive turns where you can completely just, four, no, I mean, present a board state that you, to me, Bertha can't even deal with. Against, like, yeah, it's it's kind of this thing where because Boros goes so wide and is so low to the ground, right? Demir, all your threats are two mana. Boros, your threats are one mana. So in that sense, Boros gets under Demir. Demir has to have like a toxic deluge or something to stall the board out. Um, Hopefully Andy has those oh, in the sideboard to is that like with like try to fix the matchup a little bit. But you know a necro not a great matchup. But Andy has already defeated Boros uh, energy already on stream, so yeah. Yeah. remember what I know from the first two rounds he did not face Boros energy, but from round two always has faced Boros energy every single round. So he's ran the gauntlet here, sneaking in barely on three at three and two, off of breakers to make the top eight here, only to get welcomed with a Boros energy in the quarter finals. So Alvin here talking about when he was sitting down that he hasn't really faced the Demir Murktai matchup that much. So maybe Andy with all his experience with support engine can maybe sneak some stuff out that Alvin is not expecting, like the Phyrexian Crusader. That is interesting. Uh so I don't Phyrexian Crusader is a little awkward in the sense that obviously you're dealing infect damage instead of actual damage so murktide you know you're not chipping in so murktide is like a two turn clock for instance uh but obviously owen probably doesn't have any way to actually deal with a fraction crusader uh, other than flying over it with a guide of souls um, jumping something so it's a it's interesting i don't know if it's like ideal here because Crusader also plays poorly into Andy's own sweepers he should be bringing in. Um, yeah. Eh. But yeah, I guess we'll see. Andy does, I know, play the main board Toxic Deluge and also will, I think, bring in an extra one. So probably have two Deluges in total for Andy in, in the deck. So Frigid Crusader yeah, is doing the weird thing where it is good and also bad at the same time. Also, turn three, I think, is also too slow at times. Turn three could be slow, but Andy's obviously on the play. Uh, you're trying to keep a hand where you do something like turn two Bowmaster at one drop into the Crusader to stabilize the board. That should be good enough. Yes. Most of the time. So it looks like in here's going to keep his six. Well, always oh, a go bowl again down to six here. So if you're if you're on energy here, what's the most ideal hand to have going into the Demir Murtai matchup? You're looking for, uh, so obviously you're looking for Guide Souls, right? You want a one drop that can't be bow mastered on two. Um, in all honesty, you're the Boros for the Bor on the Boros Energy side. Your ideal curve is probably the same every game. You want to go turn one Guide Souls into turn two Amp Drafter, flip over something good like an Ajani, a Goblin Bombardment. Um, in this case, Alwyn can even flip over a Blood Moon, and it might lock Andy out of the game like it did in game one. Uh, yeah, on Andy's side, I'm pretty sure you most likely want to have okay. the interaction oh, the first one or two turns, get or have your turn two drop as well. Also, have other removal suites like Fatal Push and Go at Crow of the Throw, and maybe the Talk to Delusion in the hand as well. So, we're going to get right into game here where we're going to have a fetch 
into a preordain. So fetching an Ironshore one here might be. <laughs> we're gonna play around the Blood Moon a little yeah, bit more now. It looks like we're playing around the Blood Moon here. It looks like we're playing around the Blood Moon. Yeah, here. So it looks like we're finally gonna start respecting it because after that game number one, I don't think we want another repeat of that. So we're gonna preordain. Let's see what anything's from the top or bottom and draw. But he, he would top both as well. So it looks like we're gonna have. A Fatal Push and Island. Not too bad. Looks like we have Force Negation in hand as well. So we're going to bottom the Force Negation. And we're going to draw the push. I'm oh, sorry. Bottom the Island. Draw the push here. Interesting that Andy kept on Force Negation. Um, I guess you can hit a Ring or a Blood Moon, but that does play a little awkwardly into Boris's creatures. Yeah, especially when you're playing the Consign the Memory as well. So it's a little bit awkward there. So we're going to go down to 18 here. Are we, face, are we fetching Basic Swamp here? I mean, it's, it, it, it's face up no kind of spell mana. But also, too, you are going to play on Blood Moon a bit. It looks like we are going to be searching for that swamp that we have in the deck here. Actually, this could mean we have Harbor of the Seas potentially as well. It could. Um, island Island is a little awkward. Um, obviously, you know, Island Island probably represents Counterspell, but Counterspell isn't actually the best part of this matchup. Um, oh, wait, no, it's a swamp. Yeah, it's a swamp. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's a swamp. We can play the psychic frog out. This frog has been pretty good every time we've seen it on our camera here. But we're gonna have Mount to come out here and play out the Johnny, which has shown to be a pretty big problem in a lot of these games we had on camera here. Yeah, but Andy right now he can he has enough cards in his graveyard to jump the frog, get in, draw a card, has the removal for the Johnny in case. Um, Oh, interesting. Let's see. Andy can sort of blow Alwyn out here by discarding a card and then pushing the Ajani. Yeah, so we're going to what have the block happen here. Discard, cling the dust, get a counter on the frog. Yeah, triggers on the stack. And then we have the Fatal Push come out now. I didn't need to, stack. Know, I didn't need to, uh, so we're playing pretty well here. Now we still have double blue up potentially. Or a bluffing the counter spell, but we know it's consigned in force negation. I'm not sure what the third card is, but I don't think you're in the worst spot here if you're Andy. Of course. Of course. Uh, I, you're not in the worst spot, but you're not in the best spot either because you did spend two cards to get rid of a single Ajani. Um, Plus, you didn't get to draw a card off the Psychic Frog. In this situation, like obviously Andy cleared the board and you really want to do that as the Demir Murtek player. But you are trading down on cards here. Um, and so Andy having only three cards in hand to Alwyn with a full group of cards is a little, a little scary. So we actually have the Blood Moon be slammed down here from Alwyn here. Now Andy has opportunity to even fetch for that basic island. I, mean, I don't think we care that much as of right now for that Blood Moon. Let's see what you're going to do here. Most likely we might fetch response, considering even maybe Force Negationing it. Which I think it's going to be the best option. Yeah, there's... Losing two cards for Force Negation seems too difficult here. If you can fetch an island, you have two blue sources and a black source for the rest of the game. It seems reasonable enough. Oh, we're going to Undercity Sewers. Oh. So we're going to Surveil, actually, before the Bloom even resolves. Interesting. Which, it's pretty interesting here, because now we can't even Merc Tide if we ever get it. Does Andy only play one island? Is that? Andy plays multiple. I think Andy plays three islands from what I've seen. Um, That's extra pay off the top there, which is also pretty interesting as well. There's no flays for the Exorcipate though, so that probably should go to the graveyard. Yeah, this would probably will hit the bin, right? So we're going to bin the Exorcipate here. And we are actually going to force negation, pitching Preordain. Oh, it's Ooh, I don't know about that. Whoa. So we're down to only one card in hand here. Not the two with the draw step. We draw into a Preordain, so we can set up the top deck here for the frog. We're actually going to swing in for two. Bring all of it down to 18. We'll get the draw off of the frog as well. Uh, so it looks like Alwyn is actually at 17. Oh yeah, because there was a fetch that happened. And then now we're going to preordain off that draw. It's like a push in the water you gave, so you can put the water you gave on top. Ooh. Actually, we're going to top top it. Andy currently has two consigns in hand. There's an argument to keeping the land here because Andy did pitch a... Um, cling to dust 
and it's a way to get value uh, out of his graveyard. But it does seem a little. One bottom. One top. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so one bottom, one top. We're gonna draw that while you gave. Interesting. So Andy bottomed the push. I guess Andy's not fearing any early drop and two drops. Oh, is this a ring? One ring wow. to the because sign never here from Andy, so I think it works out okay, I guess. Wow. Rewarded. <laughs> yeah, Andy is being heavily rewarded here for the decisions that are being made. And then we draw into the spell center, so not too bad. So we're now gonna swing it for two again. He had another card with the frog. We get into a polluted delta here, so at least we can have our double blue basic now if we ever need it. But also, we can also get the second surveil in to set up our next turn as well. This does seem like a situation where Andy just wants to claim end of turn while holding up um, consign and spell snare. So. Oh, here comes the Johnny, eats the spell snare up. So, what else can Alvin do here with the three mana? Oh. Alvin down to two cards. A second to Johnny. Not much you could do about that if you have double. So we can get uh, our cat token here. And now Alwyn is now on the rebuilding phase where if that Johnny flips and he has a red source, the game could get out of hand very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's a little interesting because obviously Andy has the consign as a way to stop an Johnny from flipping. Um, but Andy is also only attacking with a 2-3 frog here, so um, we'll see how that ends up working out. I mean, at least we can swing with the frog by exiling some cards, but also, is this this is probably cling to dust, right? Yeah, this is like a cling to dust. So we're going to refill our hand a little bit. Got an extra card here. Yeah, I get extra card. We're going to escape five cards. We got almost all our lands out with the spell snare, and where are we gonna we're gonna exile a one ring, I think, or oh, marsh flats from all winds yeah. graveyard to draw a card. So all I'm just gonna ring what Queen of Dust does. It's not a card you see, it's a card you see more often nowadays, but if, if you're brand new to modern, not really something you see all the time. Yeah, it's just nice incidental graveyard hate against decks like Gorios. It's a way to recoup some card advantage late in the game. Okay, so you can do it again. Okay. And it does have some cool applications with Murktide. You can escape some cards, cast it from your graveyard, and buff your Murktide. Is that me? I think Andy just drew Meat Hook Massacre, which is. That does a pretty good job of dealing with this Johnny as of right now. That's an interesting draw. You can. Meat Hook for two. But then you'd have to discard a card to your frog to get in. I think we're going to swing with the fr I think we're going to the make the frog fly. Your excellent three cards? Yeah. Okay, so you're level three. Okay, cool. And then we're now going to swing for two. Get some value in. go down to 13. Okay. Oh, let's go down to 13 now. We're drawn to the new land that came from Dustmorn. That comes in untapped, which is a kind of a little bit better. It's a better uh, Dark Slick Shores in most situations, especially in the late game. Now we're going to potentially set up our me, her massacre mana, x equals 2. Our frog is going to live here, and we're going to board wipe everything off the board right now and gain 2 life. So we are going to have the me, her massacre come out, or we're going to think about it a little bit more. This is a bit weird because we don't really want to. How, how much would you prioritize me, her massacre right now? Um, it, this is like a fine board to meet Hook Massacre, you know, sometimes people get too greedy and let the Boris Energy player fill up their board. Uh, the issue with that is obviously if the Boris Energy player gets some energy, plays a guy to souls and buffs a creature, that creature might get out of meat hook range. Here, it's a great, I think this is like an ideal opportunity just because Andy can still hold up consign in his hand for a potential run ring. So... Andy should be covered on most angles here. Uh, there's not a lot that Alwyn can do to punish. So Alwyn shuffling up, getting the elegant party here off the air in Mesa. I think to see what's on top of the land. Oh, do we? Oh yeah, we're, look, we're just looking. Yeah, we're surveilling. Surveilling. We have one card in hand that's on the far right there. Depending if we should even bend this or not. Man, 
Hey. Andy yeah, seems bin. pretty I'm well positioned here. We're gonna bin the Ocelot Pride. Maybe try and search for a Flage, I'm not too sure, but we do have the Clean Dust Engraver, but we still can't escape it as of now. But this extra pretty Andy's hand can really stop what all the ones we should do in the future. So we're actually gonna play out the Stack Prison now. Interesting. So Andy has a choice here to try to consign the Static Prison. Um, obviously, it's a triggered ability when it ETBs. Yep. So. Okay. So Andy, Andy is focusing on protecting the frog here. Or don't, don't I even get it? You don't get that. Okay, cool. So it stayed in the battlefield, right? And then uh, I will. Yeah. So it looks like the Static Prison will just stay on the battlefield. Um, it is awkward that. For static reason to remain on the battlefield, Owen has to pay energy, but Owen's probably just going to let the static reason die. So we're going to pick up the Gigantha here with our three mana, so nothing, no, nothing else in hand up besides the Gigantha. As, as Tingo would say, from a sign of weakness. So we're going to discard the Toxic Deluge to the Frog, and now Super 4, and now draw right here. going to bring down Owen to 8. Wow, we have one, two, three, four, five cards. Uh, Six cards in Graveyard here yeah, for Andy. So we just pass and go while well, leaving up the King of the Dust at end step. Yeah, so all in as predictable isn't going to pay for the static prison that has no more use. Um, Top one. Oh, so we have Ooh, Guide of Souls. Top deck Guide of Souls is not too bad. So now we get to play our Jagatha, which is going to give us a life and energy here. So we go to 9. Three energy. So this. This Jagatha can start flying pretty soon here. Yeah. Jagatha. This is kind of. This is interesting because obviously Alwyn can give the Jagatha flying, but, yeah. but Jagatha needs to attack. So, and Andy has first attack here, so Alwyn can't actually have a flying blocker Ooh, before I lethal. Okay. So it looks like we're going to be clearly addressing our entire, entire graveyard here, beside the Toxic Deluge, and we exile the Stag Prison. We're going to draw a card. And draw two cards here. It looks like a Fatal Push, but do, actually, we can Fatal Push the kind of Souls before anything happens. It looks like a second Frog here. We're going to discard that. Yeah. Discard. Oh, the Phyrexian Crusader. Yeah. Actually, he's taking that so, one back real quick. Looks like he wants to. Andy wants to discard. Frog will become a f six tough, six power thing. Yes. Um. Seems reasonable. Just discard, attack. There's an argument that. Oh, okay. So Andy's just going all in with the flying here. Okay, cool. So I go two, three. Go down to three here. All all in. So nine, so I go to four. Oh, go to four. Um, you're gonna draw a card. We'll draw a card off that. A second frog here isn't too bad. The second frog doesn't really do too much. Um, Andy's probably just gonna play the Crusader. The Frexian Crusader here. He's been seeing a lot on the on the on the stream here, but this card did win the game by itself <laughs> earlier. It is one of those cards that Boros Energy, they stare at it. And it, th this card says protection from your entire deck, so... Yeah. Now, this Dragantha gonna put in a lot of work here because what, beginning of combat, Gaia Souls needs to... What, doesn't need to attack or just on beginning of combat? If the trigger happens. Guide of Souls is whenever a creature... When, uh, when you attack, so... You can jump the Gigantha here, get him for 7. We're just dead on. Oh, you're just so, dead on board. Yeah, you're dead on board. You need to. There is a chance. Andy has two cards in hand, so Andy could just pitch both. Draw card, pitch both to Psychic Frog. Or pitch all three to Psychic Frog and give it flying. So all one needs a removal spell here for this frog. Otherwise, it looks like this game is over. This would be pretty hard to remove this frog unless you have a consign the memory, because I don't think. You need to have a discharge plus bolt. Oh, actually, no, double discharge, you mean have a chance to even kill this frog. Oh, let's go to the second game. I don't see any. The third game, sorry. Third game. Yeah, so, oh, let's scoop up the game number two here. Now we're going to go to game number three, where all is now going to be on the play, which I heavily matters a bit, actually. I don't know what happened. I don't know if I played too many lands. Yeah, I mean, that that game basically came down to Andy had the turn two frog. Really felt like that I frog drew Andy five, six plus cards of that game. You know, just rolling in the card advantage. 
Your um, frog, yeah. Clearing Alwyn's the board, frog clearing the Ajani's, clearing all the one drops. Yeah, protect, Indy protect had the a crucial then you consignment ring ring. for Alwyn's ring. Then you counter the static person. Yeah. It was, I mean, yeah, all the way there, not much you could do there, okay. especially when. What's happening? What's I mean, happening? I you're facing you down a, those, you know, a frog that's just being down every single right turn. This turn in the hand and oh, strong yeah, which cards as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, Andy got Andy very f fortunate he was on the play for game two and got had the turn two frog. But Alwyn can definitely turn this around. Um Alwyn's on turn Alwyn's on the play for game three. And if Alwyn just leads yeah. on a couple of one drops and Andy doesn't have the pushes, um obviously Borussia Energy can just snowball the game away. I mean yeah. Alwyn if he has the hand of Gaia Souls turn one, with turn two Gaia Souls Ocelot Pride, you're in a very well position to just run away with the game. What's kind of interesting to me is Alwyn keeps at Blood Moons here. Um, obviously, Blood Moon is, is, is an interesting card uh, in the matchup. Can you tie? But you have to play. Okay, cool. Yeah. Obviously, Blood Moon is an interesting card here in the matchup, but. Once Andy knows I need to play around well, Blood Moon, I'm, I'm just going to fetch basics. You know, there's not a lot of benefit to having the Blood Moon in the deck, especially since you know the Boris energy can be constrain themselves on white man. With the Blood Moon. So it looks like both players are beginning to resolve their mulligans here. Rowan, looking at his hand. Might be wanting to keep the seven, depending on what it is, but we're actually going to send it back immediately. Keep a six, and both players are actually going to send it back. So, both players are now the six here. I mean, it's terrifically fine, but I've seen some interesting mulligans today where we've had some subpar cards where it didn't really you won? do much, but all right. looks like all the way actually one Max one. Walters, if he yeah. won this game versus yeah. Francesco Kramer, where uh, Max <laughs> takes the game on Boris NG. Uh, Oh, it looks like, oh no, my hammer time lost. No, or goat. The hammer no, time goat is gone. Why? If Francesco can't win, no one can win with hammer. Oh, I was ready for hammer. Hammer's a cool deck. Yeah. Francesco, long time hammer player. Always, it's hard not to room when he's on hammer. Hey, so. So it looks like Max Walter is going to take that. Go eventually, now to the semifinals, which is going to be one more round away to the finals, and then potentially for an invite here. Well, do we know who Max Walters is potentially going to be playing in the top eight? I think so. We just take a we can take a real quick look at the top eight bracket here. So we were just told that we actually did the bracket wrong, so we got to switch out, swap. Char so basically, Charles and Will are actually on opposite bright eye of the bracket. So either Max Walters is going to face either Kevin or Curtis Lamb. So we'll fix that pretty soon. But it's pretty interesting to see. Basically. Interesting. So Basically. Max is going to play either Merktide, which should be a favorable matchup, or Am Titan, which can go both ways. Yeah. It very much depends on how much both players have in hand. Also, Curtis as well depends on how well he draws. Because we've seen the Amazon on the stream here for didn't really be able to draw much. At one point, his hand was just double exploring. Couldn't really do much, sadly. That's a matchup where the Blood Moon matters a lot. Oh, yeah. Blood Moon <laughs> seems like a pretty good card versus the Amulet Titan deck, where Shifty Woodland it becomes your win con. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's, uh... That, that is something. And, you know, I, it's a testament to the deck that, you know, it, with no creatures, just the Shifting Woodlands, you can still do stuff. Yeah. Deck seems pretty damn good. Yeah. So it looks like both players have resolved their bullets again. Both players down the six, and we have a turn one playing into Gaia Soul. So it's step number one of the perfect hand, perfect start, basically. Yeah, it looks like Andy has a Stern Skull deck for the two drop. So we have a Gaia Souls. Are the car ready? Uh, oh, Amp Raptor! Uh, Into the Stern Skull thing. Okay. <laughs> All the way out there, just like, oh, do you have the guns, Phil? Oh, oh. <laughs> A little bit of tease there, but we still have energy here. Getting in there with the one, bringing Andy down the uh, 19. Hold up, we should. All one should have zero energy here because. No, he has one energy from the uh, from the Aether, Aether hub. All we needed to use the energy to cast the. Amp oh yes, we. I will tell the judge that. It's like. Yeah. 
So it looks like we're gonna have the Ocelot probably come out here from all the way in here. Sorry, we can catch up a little bit. Andy did play Verd Cag in the past while all wind plays out on March Flats and then plays off the Ocelot probably, which makes it a really weird situation here for Andy. Yeah, it doesn't look like Andy has much actual interaction here. Uh, he's a push. Okay. Okay, so Andy's gonna prevent the life gain this turn. You used it on your Interruptor? Oh, oh then... thank you. So, yeah. looks like we did get a fix up there where there should be no energy there because we we did use the Aether Hub for the Amp Raptor. Sorry about that. Twitter is keeping you in check, man. This is the no. Hey, guys. <laughs> I was looking up at the camera there. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. They check everything here. But we went down to 18 hour early on the end step. Wow. The Oslo Pride does resolve. Was it Twitter? And you can potentially find another nice. removal suite just for this Oslo Pride. Because getting to City's Blessing, that's when the game is probably over. Yeah. Obviously, Andy. It's interesting the threat evaluation here. Andy chose to kill the Guide of Souls rather than the Ocelot Pride. Um, their Guide of Souls can grow creatures, make them fly, but Ocelot Pride is an army in the can. Oh, we have top of the Friction Crusader. Interesting. That is very good against <laughs> the Ocelot Pride. So we're going to have our turn three Friction Crusader, which where do you want to be yeah. if you're Andy here? This is the prime time to pull out the Phyrexian Crusader if there's any time because now we can start swinging for two infect every turn and then potentially win on the spot. Yeah, and I end it here obviously fetching out a basic to play around the blood room. Um, all in, not a lot, of, it doesn't look like it has too much more action in his hand. Um, it's kind of interesting how all in might actually attack through this Crusader. Um, there's not a lot of answers. It looks like Andy does have the force for any potential ring. So, Alwyn's gonna need to draw some good stuff here. Yeah, Alwyn needs some of the some really good cards here. Okay, Andy pointed out we should cut his deck before he starts to surveil. So, we're gonna mill over the Arid Mesa, which is pretty good. Now we're gonna draw. I mean, this opens up a spot for a turn four ring if you're Alwyn here, but also but we know that Andy has a force negation in the hand. Ooh, all of it is just saying first strike on Ocelot Pride, but we're going by the Gigante here, a sign of weakness here, it has to turn. Ooh, we have Expert in hand now for Andy. Oh, we dropped our card here. I think we dropped Expert that we just drew. Now we're going to preordain most likely here. But we also have a stern scolding, so we're pretty well positioned here. Where there's a good sign. Okay, there's a frog. Interesting. Frog and sign are both good cards right now, but I don't think you really care that much about the frog if you have Frex and Crusader. One on top, one on top. I do think you kind of need the frog here because your Crusader is staying on defense to hold back the Ocelot and any future creatures. Sounds good. So frog here is your actual... Um, Way you're gonna get through. Yeah. So oh. Now there's two poison counters here on Andy, okay, cool. which I think Alwyn actually has some. What's what's, so, what's those tokens called with the dry race on Finley? Mm -hmm. I think. I'm not too sure, but we have. There's two poison counters at least we know of for Andy. We don't unfortunately have a counter for it, so we're gonna keep track of it here. Let's do here with some dice of our own. It's interesting that. Andy is swinging Thanks. here. Awesome. I don't, because obviously Crusader needs you need ten infect to win the poison. But Chris, with Crusader being the only source of poison in the deck, it's hard to see Andy being able to swing five times with this creature and not exposing himself to a crackback from Alvin. Um, but maybe the frog is good enough. Yeah, maybe. I mean, this is this very similar board to how Andy on camera last round got his winning in where he's stringing, uh, turning the Crusader, plays a frog, goes on full defense with the frog, and just keeps the Crusader swinging every turn. But all the way here, surveilling again with the second elegant parlor that was grabbed here by the Aerid Mesa. Looks like we were, might be keeping it on top, we're not too sure. So debating. Go ahead and leave that on top. So we're gonna leave it on top. We're gonna leave it on top. We're gonna, we're gonna draw. 
I wonder what it, it is. But I'll end up checking the graveyard. Probably uh, we'll what that is. We're gonna shock in the sacred foundry. We're gonna uh, go down to 17. So there's 17 all right now. Play out Giganta. So now we're gonna pass it back in here. Just need four more turns, four more swings for this Frickson Crusader to get the to really show its strength. True, but hard to justify swinging it in when you can a Giganta can come back and hit you on the back swing. So let's see what is going to happen here. So we have we're gonna swing in with this reaction because I think Andy drew a Bowmasters. We can deal with an Ocelot Pride at least. Bowmasters is interesting. I would. Oh, we're okay. flying! We're gonna swing with the bow. Interesting. So this single yeah. you death. Oh, we're just, okay. Crusade is now on the blocking duty. Yeah, this is what I would expect because Crusader here is something that. Owen can't really swing through. Um, it's really difficult for Owen to actually make any progress without, let's say, a ring or a flip to Johnny. So Andy, if he keeps the Crusader here on defense, he can just keep swinging with the Frog, keep drawing cards, develop the board. Owen looks like in a rough shape right now. I mean, yeah, Owen. Don't we? You had to play. G oh, we actually drew into a Guide of Souls, so. Okay. Guide of Souls to the battlefield. Ooh. Alwyn having a, making a horn of his own to signal that a Guide of Souls is now entered. Interesting. But now Guide of Souls makes this game interesting because now the. Now. Also, if I can sh really start to put in some work here, now we have a Flage come out from okay. Alwyn. Ooh. This is interesting. So, obviously, Indy has the extirpate for the flage. But the question is how does Andy deal with uh, the lifelink? I guess he still has. Andy still has the bowmaster. So, he's going to do Interesting. So, we chose the target to flage on to the frog. But. Uh, it's interesting that Andy decided to let the uh, Guide of Souls resolve when Andy had a Stone Scolding in hand. Yeah, so now we have a Discharge come in. Maybe we're gonna. Energy from this interaction. Oh, no, we. Did we? Oh, wait, we. We discarded Stone Scolding. Interesting. Yeah, we, Andy discarded the Stone Scolding instead of Stone Scolding the Guide of Souls. This is. So, the frog currently has three damage on it. Um. Andy is, is kind of incentivized to protect it with the Force of Negation. Since it is most of his clock here. Yeah, four mana up too, so we can Force Negation on this Discharge Well. Oh, okay, we three mana, so we're gonna hard cast Force Negation here. But we can't do much about the Flay Desert right now, but next turn at least we'll have access to our Black Source. This is, so end, this is still on Alvin's turn. Yeah, this is the end step. Alvin is going to make a cat. Uh, getting an energy. Doesn't have the City's Blessing yet. So it looks like on Andy's turn, Andy is incentivized to extirpate the Flage and then Bowmaster the Ocelot. Yeah, because we only have nine mana. This, we only we have nine permits this turn, so this Ocelot probably can get out of hand. So we can pull masters now because we can wait to extra pay on draw Ooh. step, but we're gonna do it right now with no cards in hand. Interesting. Take all so, of the all it's like what? <laughs> extra pay? <Yeah. laughs> extra pay? Did, you, you do bring up a good point, Kyle. Be, where you know, uh, so Andy probably should wait until the draw step to extra pay. Right um, <laughs> if Alwyn draws a flage, it's just a free discard. And if not. It's free information. Yeah. There's four but we can do it, I guess, right now, a little bit on sorcery speed here. That was just, yeah, but we're now we're, we're more incentivized just to play the Boom Ashes to deal with this Ocelot Pride. Uh, yeah, this, oh, sorry. Right. this is getting interesting because because Andy let the Guide of Souls resolve, the Guide of Souls is gonna. If Alwyn draws a creature to make an energy next turn, Alwyn can jump the Giganto, make it fly. And if Giganto starts flying, it's actually going to beat the frog in combat. And so 
Andy might have to pivot into trying to win with the Crusader again. Yeah, it's pretty strange because actually, yeah, we can we're, we're gonna fry the frog. We're gonna, we're gonna find the frog. We're gonna, the frog. We're gonna swing in. We're gonna take three damage. Draw a card off this, and we draw a Naiho spell one, which you do not want to see after you just extirpated the plague. Yeah, this is not an ideal draw. Um, so we'll see if all if all one can find a creature here. If he finds a creature, he is back in this game. Let's see what the card is, but it looks like Alwyn's kind of, I think he's counting his permanents, but it seems like we have nine permanents right now. We will get City Placing and set up. So, do you have a second also Prime? Ooh, so play the Mountain and pass. So, okay. and step with the Bowmasters that. also Pride. So, wow. Andy not well, Owen swinging with the, the Gigantha to make it fly is pretty interesting. Well, Owen didn't have the third energy to make oh, it fly. Oh, yes. So, Owen needed to draw a creature there to make it fly. Um, Andy being able to deploy the Bowmaster here. Uh, it's a pretty good for Andy. Yeah, so we, it was land land. We keep an island on top, or is that a swamp? That's a swamp. So, we're keeping a swamp, we drew a draw into it. So, what is the black color behind the swamp? I think that is. Is that a surgical? That's a second for Exine Crusader. Interesting. Okay, so now Andy is actually incentivized to just jump the frog. Draw a card, play the second crusader, and swing with the crusader. And now we have a two, like a three turn clock basically, as of right now. It'll, yes, so the crusader will take all into four poison. Are you flying him or not? Yeah, he's flying. He looks all the So that's three. And then this is two. So we have a 15 here for all the win. He is at four. He has a four poison right now. Exactly. I'm, I'm at eight, and then if I block this, you can't block this card. I can block. Oh no, no, my computer. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, then, yeah. Sorry, that's why you were being so. Oh, yeah. Yeah. About it, yeah. So protection obviously yeah, yeah, right. means that creatures cannot block. Protection is not so uh, common in modern that I had. Like, protection means that the yeah. all creatures cannot block the crusader because protection for red and white, white and red creatures cannot block it. Um, so here's the second crusader. So this is so Owen's on a two turn clock here. <laughs> Not looking good. Did Owen top a creature? No. It is a oh, arena glory, and the flages have been extirpated. Oh no! Not what you want to see if you're Owen here. Honestly, since Owen's playing every card out, and you can just play whatever he wants on any worry as well. Oh man. Now it's well, um, doesn't really do anything here. So we're gonna crack the spell bomb just to draw cards. Just cycle it, sure. Draw two Boom Masters. That's a pretty good one. Yeah, that's that's a card we want to see. Because now we need to swing with the Crusader, all we want, pump up the frog. Yeah, we're gonna fly the frog. Um, oh, we're supposed to guess. We're actually gonna swing with only one Crusader, so we're gonna take a little bit of a slower route here. So it's still a two turn clock, right? Because yes. Owen goes to six poison and two Crusaders will be lethal next to him. And he can keep the Crusader, one of the Crusaders on defense. So. Yes. So, Frex and Crusader, threatening lethal next turn. Doing some work here. Doing some work here. Yeah, this car is. This car has been stealing all the games that his bonus energy for I've seen on camera so far. And oh, yeah, that's it. it. Wow. He cool. takes it to win with Phyrexia Crusader. This. They're stealing the game away. Wow. The first seed of the top B is knocked out. That's great. Crusader just kind of. Soloed that game. Well, obviously, uh, Andy had the frog to keep the, the cards rolling, yeah, but even with the Crusader just five, you played, preventing, souls, played, preventing all one from drawing, uh, preventing all one from.